It's hard to think of David Bowie's songs as anything other than proper, proper decent bruv. Indeed, he's considered one of the most influential artists of the 20th century and perhaps of all time. He gave us the classics Life on Mars, Ashes to Ashes, Starman, Heroes, Young Americans, Absolute Beginners, Golden Years… the list goes on. In fact, the list of great David Bowie songs is longer than your nan's overgrown toenail. But there is one song that doesn't quite fit on this list, and Bowie would be the first to admit it. I am of course talking about the Laughing Gnome. This is the story about how this abomination came to be, how Bowie tried to kill it, how it came back to life, and how it actually might be Bowie's greatest track ever. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. To understand where this, uh, song, we'll call it, came from, we have to go back to the very start of David Bowie's career before he was even called David Bowie. Born David Robert Jones, his musical interest started around age 9 when his father bestowed upon him a mighty collection of American 45s, including Fats Domino, Chuck Berry and Little Richard. From this point on, he was destined for greatness. There were just a good few years of not-so-greatness to get through first. You see, before Bowie was Bowie, he was throwing a lot of sh** against the wall, hoping something would stick. He potted around in a myriad of bands before he was noticed. His first ever band was the Conrads, and then he'd appear as Davy Jones with the King Bees, which is when he released his debut single, Lisa Jane, in 1964. Then the name changed to the Manish Boys, where he released his second single, I Pity the Fool. And then came Davy Jones and the Lower Third. He released his third and fourth singles under this name. Whether or not you count these as actual David Bowie singles is a debate all in itself. But one thing is for certain, he was trying on a lot of musical hats, and none of them were quite the right size. Then, shortly after Davy Jones and the Lower Third, he decided to create the stage name David Bowie, as he thought Davy Jones would cause confusion with the Davy Jones of the Monkees, which was a good shout. In 1966, he released three singles, Do Anything You Say, I Dig Everything, and Rubber Band. These were the first released under the name David Bowie and the first to be credited solely to him. However, these singles never took off, and Bowie was forced to continue to bang his head against the music industry wall. A year later, Bowie got desperate. Really desperate. And really, only the desperation of being denied again and again and again could lead to this next single even being considered. That and probably loads of drugs. In a nutshell, this song is about a gnome who visits Bowie's house, watches some TV, laughs, burps, steals cigarettes, becomes a nuisance, and is shipped off in a train. Definitely drugs. The song was made by Bowie and studio engineer Gus Dudgeon who worked with the likes of Elton John. Dudgeon provided the voice for the gnome, and used a process of speeding the tape up to produce the Alvin Chipmunk style of sound. If you've never heard it before and you need a reminder, I've popped a link to it down in the description below. You'll also find a link down there to get Amazon Music totally free for 30 days. That's enough time to listen to the track 14,609 times. <laughs> You're welcome. So, the single was released, and alas, it did not prove to be the breakthrough hit that Bowie was hoping for. In fact, critics would later say things like, it steadfastly remains the flop it deserved to be, and undoubtedly the most embarrassing example of Bowie juvenilia. He'd have to work for another two years until Space Oddity was released in 1969 the single that finally gained him some recognition. Over the next few years, Bowie continued to grow, becoming more popular than a kid with a vape in a playground. He released the albums The Man Who Sold the World, Hunky Dory, and then exploded into the persona Ziggy Stardust in 1972, perhaps in an effort to escape his gnomey past. Just when he thought the gnome was dead and buried, the gnome returned. Typical of gnomes, isn't it really? The label on which that song was released decided to re-release the single, hoping Bowie's newfound stardom would allow them to cash in. And amazingly, it did. It reached number 6 in the UK and number 1 in New Zealand. Was it actually a good song after all? How this re-release performed so well is a bit of a mystery to me. But then again, people love a novelty song, don't they? 
Just take Aqua's Barbie Girl, or the Crazy Frog, or Steve Martin's King Tut, or the entire discography of Weird Al. Perhaps newfound Bowie fans welcomed this goofy chapter in his history. I think the author Nicholas Pegg summed it up perfectly. The world would be a duller place without it. Some Bowie fanatics insist that it has a deeper, darker meaning that most people don't realize. That it's actually about a man losing his mind. A schizophrenic's conversation with himself. Which actually, to be fair, does fit, doesn't it? Some have also pointed out that it could have laid the musical foundations for songs like Speed of Life and Scary Monsters and Super Creeps, both of which feature the bassoon as the lead instrument, just like The Laughing Gnome. Despite its little resurgence, Bowie himself still wanted distance from it. In 1990, Bowie announced a Greatest Hits tour, Sound and Vision. The set list was to be decided by the public. The enemy, being the little scoundrels that they are, campaigned to get the Laughing Gnome onto that set list. In response, Bowie scrapped the voting idea and chose the set list himself. Reminds me a bit of Boaty McBoatface. Don't give the British public any power. We're all too silly. <laughs> what do you reckon then? Was this Bowie's worst song? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories from the music world. And speaking of awful decisions, did you know that Dave Grohl originally hated the name Foo Fighters? Check the video on screen for that one, and I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose.